the Ladino songs were um, the result of, at first, a commission that had nothing to do with whether they should be in any way Jewish. But the commission came from the, com the horn player, David Jolly, who teamed up with Lucy Shelton, the soprano, and they thought they would like to have a composer write something for them. There isn't a lot of music that pairs a horn Why with a soprano. Of them? Well, they wanted to do a recital together. He wanted to do something that showed how vocal he was. I suppose that was the genesis of it, actually. So we got together with Lucy. And Lucy and David asked me to write something. And they said, you know, we've even thought about a third instrument, which would be the guitar. So I thought, well, now you're really asking for a difficult thing here, guitar and horn. Guitar being the quietest instrument in a concert stage, not electric guitar, obviously, an acoustic, folksy, classical guitar type situation, which is very hard to hear by itself with a French horn, which can play louder than practically any instrument, uh, and a soprano. So I thought, this is very difficult. But I, I loved Lucy's singing, and I loved his horn playing. And I said, uh, I'd love to consider this. At the time, I was in the middle of writing uh, The False Messiah. So the idea of it being Jewish or uh, having a Jewish subject seemed natural, because if I'm going to write two pieces at the same time, they maybe will play off each other. And I also thought that a horn and a voice and a guitar suggest something folksy. At the time, I was also teaching at NYU, and one of my students turned out to be the daughter of Isabel Gantz, who was a Sephardic, Sephardic singer. And she gave me uh, a recording of her group, Alhambra, and I basically took the texts and discarded the music and kept the influence of the sound of the music, but not any of the actual tunes or anything, because it... it They're not based on any folk material music. No, no. They're completely f f freely composed. Yes. The texts are Ladino poems. Yes. And the, the poems are to be sung in Ladino. Uh, and the, the sound of the music has a, almost like a uh, perspective, uh, my own perspective on Ladino. I didn't make a study of it, but the music is clearly the modes were familiar to me, and the textures and the, the, the cantorial style of it was free, and the eastern quality of it appealed to me and was something I'd grown up hearing. So I didn't really have to make a study to do it. But you didn't grow up hearing Ladino. Well, I did a little bit. Where? Mostly I didn't. Well, uh, my parents were professional folk dancers on the side. So not only did I grow up hearing it, but I grew up dancing to all of it. So I really felt it very strongly. And uh, I let that easily inform what I was doing. And I allowed also the virtuosity uh, in the players to do that. And um, Elliot Fisk played quite a few performances of it with them. So we had three amazing virtuosi. Probably the strangest thing about it was that David Jolly could play so quietly that in one spot, I allowed the guitar to pluck a note, and as it fades away, the horn emerges. And for a horn player to be able to do that is really mind-boggling. And he told me that his students will be able to do that, because it, the horn can do it, and people should learn to play that way. So I'm hoping that some other people can play that way.